Bye -bye. So, um, I had the privilege of watching the first four episodes of Falling Water. Fantastic! And um, I'm super excited. I think that you guys did an excellent job of creating an original, um, like a truly original idea from maybe not such an original concept. And it's very fresh and very unexpected. So what were some of the, um, I guess, motives or what did you draw from to come up with such a creative idea? Well, I think, I mean, really it all started, again, like I said, multiple times started about 10 years ago with <laughs> Henry Bermel and I being drunk. And uh, <laughs> we worked on, we were working on Brotherhood at the time. And the thing about Henry and I is both our mothers were Jungian therapists. So that idea of the collective unconscious was always sort of kicking and around. And the dreams mean something. Exactly. And the dreams are talking to us. And so that idea, those two ideas fused and that's where we came up with it. And then like any good writers, you know, everything we consume, all the music, movies, books, all, they all sort of feed into your system. And so, I mean, I can point to influences of especially Haruki Murakami, the Japanese novelist. I think more than anybody else, you know, that's where it started. But, you know, Henry's love, filmic love of Fellini and the sort of surrealist, you know, my love of Kubrick, um, you know, our mutual love of Bob Dylan. Uh, I mean, the influences are everywhere. I mean, William Gibson's obviously um, shouted out to. So, it's kind of everything, really. But what we wanted to do was create something that was totally cinematic. Because that was the thing we were both convinced television was going to. We were convinced television is moving from the talking head to the cinematic. So we wanted to create a show where the visuals were actually more important than the dialogue. Where the sound design. Now, I don't know if you watched it on a laptop or if you got a chance to watch it on a 5.1 surround. The sound design on the show is a major character in the show because the way dreams sound. Well, that's um, something that I also wanted to ask you guys about was um, you don't know what's a dream. Like, you think you know. You think you know, but a lot of the dream <coughs> shots are very similar to the reality shots. And, mm -hmm. like, so is that going to be something that comes into play, what's real and what's not real? And well, it's all real. <laughs> that, that's, again, I think one of the things that Gail, when she came on, and it was always we, the degree to which over the first season we have to really teach the audiences yes. the rules of the show. Yes, how to watch the show. Teach the audience how to watch the show, and they can pick up the clues. And we didn't want the clues to be so obscure that people couldn't follow them. So a lot of the times, if people are dreaming, you see them closing their eyes. Or if they're waking up and they're back in reality, they're opening their eyes. The motif of water, which is why the show is called Falling Water, is very, very important. That's also a clue. Um, but we, we, we really don't want people to disconnect from the characters and their journeys, trying to figure out whether they've missed something. <laughs> right. Because the, the goal of the show really is to present, not real or not, it's all real. There's just dreaming and waking and it's a, as if it's an entire system. That's the universe in which our real drama plays. So if, you know, boyfriend and girlfriend have a fight in a dream, they had a fight. It just, that space where traditionally what we're trying to teach the audience is, what happens in dreams is just as real as what happens and, and when you're awake. And that's the interesting thing is that the, the, the three characters and then the, our universe expands are all powerful dreamers. When we meet them in the, in the pilot episode, they are only beginning to become aware of it. We've seen signs because Tess, she's a trend spotter. Obviously, she's connecting to a collective you know, um, consciousness that she's not potentially aware of. And she's having these powerful dreams about a baby. And she doesn't have a baby. Um, and Burton, you know, Burton's able to, you know, He's haunted by his dreams. Yeah, he's you know. haunted by this woman that appears in his dreams, and he's sure he has a relationship with, but has no proof of it. And you know, for Taki, he's called the hunch for a reason. It's they their intuitive powers that they express in their daily lives. Burton is a fixer. Tess is a trend spotter. Talk is a cop. They all have these incredibly intuitive powers. And where does it come from? It comes from the fact that they are very in touch with their dreams, which is what sets them up to be good dreamers and good dreamer candidates. And makes them. Uh, and makes them desirable to people who are aware of the, of the potentiality of reaching into our dreams exactly. and entering other people's dreams. Exactly. The idea of the show is that our people are just figuring out that our dreams are connected, but certain people have known this for a long time. So, uh, something else I noticed about the show too was mm -hmm. that you <laughs> built a beautiful mystery. Mm -hmm. like. I, I mean, it has everything. Almost, almost film noirish. I want to say. Yeah. Um, so what? That was intentional. That was intentional. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was one of the things that 
that, the, the, as, as Blake was saying, I mean, the TV caught up with where they were in 2006 when they first conceived of this. And that's why we brought on board Juan Carlos Fresnadillo, you might know him from directing 28 Weeks Later in Intacta. Um, because he's a visual director, he's also an excellent cast. But we wanted to make sure that he was able to, in partnership with Blake, who's also a director, and in fact directed the finale, um, was able to create the visual grammar and look of the show. Which was you know, partly film noir, partly Polanski. You know, there's 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 all sorts of cinematic roots all over this. You know, there's David Lynch in it. There's Polanski in it. There's you know, there's Fellini in it. And because Maybe of those my movies, ex-husband, uh, Brian a little De Palma. bit, a little bit of Brian, a little bit of Jim. <laughs> <Ex-husband>. <laughs>